So what do we have here, Kevin? Well, this little guy, this one little red guy that's left here, is something that should not be happening right now. This is Honeycrisp. Uh, this is bred by the University of Minnesota to be able to stand the frigid winters of Minnesota, mm -hmm. uh, up where it gets 40 degrees below zero, and most apple varieties just get killed to the ground up there. Uh, and so they're very excited when they come along with one that's been able to stand up to the cold like that. Well, we found out it also stands up very well to the heat. And as we open this guy up, I'll remark that we had a very hot September this year. Oh, absolutely. Over 100 oh. degrees almost every day. Almost on, unbearable. Up year. to 109 around a Labor Day. And it cooked some of the apples on these surrounding trees. Let's give Honeycrisp a try and see how it is. Do you taste a Honeycrisp in the store that good? Never. And Honeycrisp is actually a, a, a variety that, that is pretty decent in the market. Yes, it is. It doesn't hold up to this. Nothing the like this. The texture is very firm and very crispy. Sweet. And it, it, it's, it's a very intense flavor. It's a very good flavored apple. Almost like a candy sweet to it. I should mention, this is on M27. This is a dinky, tiny Small rootstock. Small rootstock. Yeah. Uh, maybe good for a patio, uh, apartment patio in a pot or something. But it just is not as productive as I would like it in a hot climate. Hot climate, I found, has had a dwarfing effect on apples. And um, uh, I really lean toward planting on a more vigorous rootstock both to overcome problems with uh, leafing out like this and also for recovering from any damage that may happen to it. Absolutely. I think, you know, we had talked a little bit earlier about rootstock selections for the area and I think you and I are both in agreement that um, M111 and M7 are probably the two rootstocks that really do well in Southern California. Yes, they do. A little uh, bit of dwarfing character, but uh, stability, woolly apple, aphid resistance, sucker, uh, almost sucker immune and compatible with almost everything that we're growing in the area. They're able to stand up to the Santa Ana winds. Uh, what could happen is if you have a little tree like this, you get a big load of apples on it. What happens? Santa Ana's come along right when it has that big load of fruit and it snaps at the graft union and you're crying over it. Better to have a bigger rootstock that's able to hold up to that wind. Absolutely. What's this little guy here, Kevin? A ni nice young tree seems to be real precocious. Yes, this is Sierra Beauty. Uh, it's a California native. Uh, they're always encouraging us to plant California natives, and so here I am with a uh, native apple tree. This is grown in the uh, gold country of California, and uh, I'm happy to be able to test it out here in Southern California to see how it does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do see our beauty at the nursery, and we've had good results with it there too. Now, when you say California native, wouldn't you say more, more or less it's a variety that is, has naturalized into California? That's true. Uh, apples are not native to the United totally. States. They're all imported from Europe, but this one... Um, variety was, that was brought here in the Gold Rush era and, and, yep. has, and has done well in the Sierra Mountains. It's done very well in the Sierra Mountains, and we're anxious to see how it does here in Riverside. Mm -hmm. Well, it looks like it's got a great start. It looks like this tree is a little more established and uh, showing some good color. What do we have? This is wine sap. Uh, variety called Virginia wine sap, uh, very old variety, uh, 1860s on. Uh, again, on the, you look through the manuals, they'll call it 800 to 1,000 chilling hours. Uh, yeah. We had a very good crop on this. This is about what's left from it, but it has done very well here and has adapted to the climate. And um, we're really excited to be growing something like this. And just because you're raised in Minnesota doesn't mean that you won't be happier in sunny Southern California. Nice texture, nice flavor. I mean, that would be a great um, cider apple. Mm -hmm. Does need a pollinator. Uh, this one's self-sterile, and so you're going to have to have another uh, apple tree blooming the same time around in order to uh, set fruit on it. Mm -hmm. Now, what's your feeling on pollinators for apples? I know we, you know, we have certain varieties that we that we say definitely require a pollinator. Other varieties that we say are definitely self-fruitful. But isn't are you under the same opinion that I am that? any variety really whether it's self fruitful or not is going to do better with a pollinator. Yes it does. We could see the difference in uh, say our Anna crops. Um, they will set a good crop without pollination but the apples are tall and skinny. But yeah. if you have Dorset Golden next to it and pollinate it, it really yeah. fattens the apples up and makes it just this humongous apple. So the fruit quality does improve having a pollinator next to yeah, it. I think fruit quality and probably the, the amount of fruit born on the tree will actually increase a little bit due to that also. Absolutely. Well, this is one of my favorite old varieties, and this is one that's always been on my list of uh, recommended varieties for Southern California. This is the old parent Fuji. 
Yeah, as you can tell from the outside, uh, this is never going to win any awards in the supermarket for uh, uh, the um, color of it. But even at a green stage like this, far, far before they're ripe, it just has a sweet, crunchy texture to it. Exactly what I'd expect out of a good Fuji. That you can't just get out of a store. Uh, very reliable. Um, takes a while to start fruiting. I found it takes about five years for it to really get going and people will get frustrated with it and pull it out after about the fourth year because they're not getting anything. And um, a lot of times they're pulling it out right before it really gets going. And so, absolutely. I think that was one of the big misconceptions with apples years ago. And one of the reasons that people thought varieties were so high chill is, you know, for many years, apples were only grown on standard rootstocks and the dwarfing rootstocks were fairly rare. Mm -hmm. So uh, through the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, even into the 70s in Southern California, people were predominantly planting apples on standard rootstock and looking at probably eight to 10 years before they had much production. So yeah. the, the, the discouragement level would come up uh, long before that and people would say, oh, it's too high chill and they'd pull it out and toss yeah, it. Yeah, this is not, not suitable for Southern California because it's obviously it's not bearing anything. Right, so you know, a little bit of patience is real important. Yes, it has. Here's something that's always intriguing to people and that's the multi-budded tree. This is a, a multi-budded four in one, low chill apple. Um, I think everybody loves to have these just because you can harvest several varieties off the tree, but what's important about this tree, Kevin? What, what, what's well, you mentioned one of the things, it's the extended harvest. Uh, the first ones to come off of this will be the Anna, and then about a week and a half later is the uh, Dorset Golden, then Ein Schemmer will be about two weeks after that, and finally the Beverly Hills, and so you get about a oh, month and a half of harvest out of one tree, yeah. rather than having four separate trees. As you can see, uh, this is about six or seven years old, and this is how big it's gotten. So we're able to keep it small and keep an extended harvest off of it, which is perfect for backyard orchards. Looks like this is a real successful variety for you, Kevin. What do we have here? This is Nittany. This is a product of the University of Pennsylvania. Nittany is their mascot. And as you can tell, it's a very productive variety. Uh, gives us a good crop, uh, big honking apples. But the best thing about them is their crunch and their taste. Mm. Crunchy, sweet, juicy, has a rich, sweet flavor to them, and it does this every year. Very reliable in our climate, and, uh, but you would have no guess that this would do well here. It's grown in uh, Pennsylvania where they've got these brid brutal, frigid winters, and uh, if I would have called them up and asked them, how does this do in the heat? They'll say, ah, oh, it'd be terrible in the heat because uh, this is uh, from a cold climate. Just like honey, Chris, you just never know until you try it here, which is what we're trying to do. See if I can open this up without impaling myself. Well, I can recognize this one without even uh, asking. This has got to be Granny Smith. Yes, it is. And uh, this one just explodes in apples every year. And uh, this is one of the ones that started to make me really think about the dormancy theory because it never does lose its leaves mm -hmm. in the winter. It just keeps its leaves. They look kind of ragged and stuff. But the new leaves in the spring just push the old ones out. And then it blossoms and then fruits like crazy, like this one that you see here. Uh, the fruit is either as good or better than any that I've tasted from the supermarket. And it just is loaded every year. We plant these out inside of elementary schools and I'll drive by them on my way to work. And I see all the branches drooping down from the apples because they don't do anything to maintain it. And yet it still fruits and takes care of itself and just gives a huge crop every year for the kids to be able to enjoy. Right. And you know, my, my Granny Smith is one of those varieties that it's another one that hangs real late. I can always eat these in January. And, and I find that the longer they hang on the tree and the more yellow color they pick up, once they get to a nice mature state, which you never see in the market. And you'll never see that, no. Uh, they're just absolutely delicious once they get that mature color. You can make pie out of them, applesauce out of them, and a wonderful cooking apple. Yes. Well, once again, in search of edible ornamentals in Southern California, I'm Tom Spellman with Dave Wilson Nursery. You can get more information on us at DaveWilson.com. And you can get more information on what Kevin's doing at cufflecreek.com. Thank you very much, Kevin. Thanks for your time. Morning. It's been wonderful having you.